Hello everyone. How are you? Happy Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Um, I'm sure it's Wednesday. I'm going to stick with that. Uh, we are back in today with a new project. Um, I've done all the boring bit already. We're after the fun bit today. Uh, but I've had quite a few people ask if I would show how to do um, a paint wash using a lighter colour to achieve more of a natural finish versus darkening a timber. A couple of weeks ago, we did a TV unit and we've also done a big set of um, pine drawers. That, that that was that big set. I think there's right there. six drawers in it, the big pine chest of drawers. That's it. Um, and we did a darker colour paint wash on those. But I've had a few ask if I would do a lighter paint wash. So I thought, let's do that today. So I've got this beautiful beautiful dresser it's got stunning turned legs um i've like i've obviously sanded a lot of furniture and you come up against some finishes and they take so long to sand off they just do not want to come off at all um and then you get some that like come off like that well this by far in all of my years was the easiest finish to get off um, I think I sanded the top in like under 30 seconds. It just came off like there was nothing there at all. Um, and in saying that, like the finish didn't look like it was damaged when I started. It didn't look like it was failing, but it just came off like it was nothing. Um, so other than the legs, which took me a little bit longer there, got some um, beautiful curved, curved carved, they're turned. So they've got some detail in them. Apart from the legs, um, like it was a pretty easy piece to sand. I used my electric sander for everything that I could. Then I came in with my carbide scraper, which is this thingy. One of these. So this has got like a little blade on it. It's, it's sharp, but not like a knife sharp. It's enough that it's going, like if you scrape it across your surface, you're gonna pull off whatever's on that surface. And it is perfect for getting into your little bits of detail. Let me bring you a little bit closer to show you. We do stock these and I do have a couple in stock as well. I'm sort of fighting with the sun today. So I've got this detail. These are perfect and you just sort of pull them along and you take your time and it's going to take all that finish off. Perfect for getting in that detail and it gives you that nice clean finish. It's much easier than folding a piece of sandpaper and like getting it down in the, into there. Um, so carbide scraped, little bit of hand sanding, mainly on the legs, um, and then my electric sander as well. I just used my orbital sander on this one. Um, other than that, and a really good clean, the prep's been pretty minimal on this one. It hasn't needed any gluing. It hasn't, um, hasn't needed any sort of fixing as such. Uh, it was purely cosmetic. It's back in here again. There's two little sparrows that have decided this is the shed they want to be in. And they just run nuts. I'm trying to make sure they go back out. <laughs> I just keep seeing them fly past. They, they've found a new flight path, I think, and they're in here today. Between those and the mouse that's like terrorizing me, we're doing well. Um, so it's a really nice, clean piece. Um, I have, let me bring you around. The only thing I have done is I've painted the panel either end. I wasn't going to. My full intention of this was to leave that timber. However, it was apply. It was like the condition was fine. Can you see that? But there it is. What am I meant to do now? <laughs> It's hanging out there. As long as I go out when I leave, we'll be fine. No, don't come near me. Oh, now there's two of them. I think I need to wait for them to go out and then I need to shut that door because they should not be in here. <sighs> Wildlife is not my thing. Right. I'm not scared of birds, but they're not my thing. <laughs> they can go away. <laughs> um, they're eating all the spiders though, at least. Anyway, so my original intention for this was to keep this the timber, but, um, and even like it was ply, it was in really good condition, 
the grain wasn't very nice. It was definitely a cheaper sheet of ply. Um, so that wasn't very nice. It didn't have that really nice finish. And now a courier shows up. I apologize. Give me two seconds. Hi. Who are you looking for? Um, yeah, so it wasn't the nicest looking ply. It also didn't sand very well. Um, it just, the finish just did not want to come off it. Um, so, hi, just leave it there on the table. Yep, what's your name? Elise. Yep, yep. yep. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. Right, hi, Elise. Hi, Elise. Hi, Elise. Nice to meet you. Sorry, guys, it's going to be one of those days. Um, so it wasn't sanding very nicely. Sometimes you'll get a ply and it just, no matter what you do, it just won't sand nice. So we have, I have decided to paint it. I really did, didn't want to, but I, sh and I should have taken a photo. It just didn't look nice. And I think a paint wash over it wasn't going to improve it. So I did decide to paint each end. Um, I originally did a coat of um, basin blocker obviously we need to make sure our paint stay in, pla in place um i did a coat of fawn which i'll grab and show you fawn is this beautiful brown with oh that's not on um a beautiful brown with like a gray base to it it's really really pretty color i wanted a little bit of warmth on it but it was a little bit too too dark and too brown so i did add i did Mm, maybe like a 70-30 mix. So 70% of this, um, the 30% of, this is cloud. It's in a, this is a jar that I smashed. Um, so it's now in a rust finished jar. <laughs> um, but this is cloud, which is a gray based white. So I did a mixture of these two that got me this really nice warm gray, uh, which I really, really like. And I think it goes really nicely with what we're doing. So one thing I haven't done and that I can show you is I always paint, and I talk about this a lot, I always paint anything that needs to be painted before I do any timber finishing. Um, reason being, it is much easier to take paint off raw timber than what it is to take paint off a timber that's already been finished. And then if you are taking paint off a timber that's already been finished, then you run the risk of having a patchy finish it might not look as nice and you might be up for um, redoing like a whole section, which nobody wants to do. Once we're done, we're done. Uh, so I always paint first because it's super easy to scrape or sand any paint off your raw timber. Um, I use, this is why I use my carbide scraper for a lot. What I use my carbide scraper for a lot. So all I do is I sort of just come along really gently and I'm, I don't really use any pressure. I uh, just come along those edges and scrape off anything that we don't want. And then what I will do as well, sometimes it can get a little bit rough. It's more just the timber fighting back. And then you come along with your sandpaper and you've already done the hard work. The paint's already gone. You come along with some sandpaper. This is just some 80 grit. And you just really lightly sand along that edge of timber. And it just smooths that timber out. Sometimes it just sort of catches. It's like, it's the best way to explain it. When you're driving a manual car and you sort of hop along a little bit, that's what it's like. Um, and it's just the timber sort of catches the blade sometimes. So a little bit of sand, just a little bit. It never needs much. It just smooths it out and makes sure that you've got a nice, clean finish. And this way too, you can get those nice straight lines with your paint. You don't have to worry about taping up. I very rarely tape at all. What is that doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, so I very, very rarely tape. And I just do a nice 
light sand along those edges. A bit of paint here, so I'm just going to run that down. And then it just cleans that up nicely. So that end looks really nice. Let's go down the other end. I'd already sort of half done that and then started the live and forgot about it. Let me bring you down this end. Oops. I'm just going to shut that door because the truck is starting Then you can sort of see it a little bit more along here. So all we do is we just go along the edge. I love my carbide scraper for this. You can absolutely sand it. But this, I find, will give you a much nicer edge as well. really catching and it's just not going along smoothly um, try going in the opposite direction as well the one area that I find I have the most difficulty is the like the end grain of a piece but most of the time it does it for those few little bits of difficulty on the odd occasion most of the time I do end up with a better result doing this than um, <clears throat> then sanding this and it's just it, it's much quicker as well so little scrape along there and you can see like you can take off pretty decent chunks of paint as well if you've got like a drawer that's not quite sliding sometimes this is enough just to run it across the sides a couple of times it's just enough to um to get it to fit properly. Go down here. And I'll just stand on my edge too. Make sure we're all nice and tidy. All right, let's make our paint wash, shall we? That was a boring bit. I promised only fun today, but here we are. Sometimes you've got to do the boring bits. All right. Let's make a paint wash. So, today we are using this beautiful custom mixed colour that we made to do... Let me swing you around. Where's my finger? This piece over here, this sideboard over here. We did that two, three weeks ago. That was a chest of drawers, rather. Um, that six drawer pine dresser that I was talking about just before. Okay, sorry. I put the camera too high. It's not happy about being there. <laughs> You wheel you down a little bit before I lose you. Um, so this is that same custom mix. We've got about an inch, not quite an inch, finger length of paint in the bottom of our jar still. And I did not open my jar before doing this video. So let me just whack it a few times. All right, now what I'm gonna do so I don't have a massive amount of paint, but you don't need a huge amount. The color is, this was our custom mix from that six drawer pine dresser we did a couple of weeks ago. So in here is Fossil, Snow and Brumby. Um, and it's ended up, it's pretty much identical to Fossil in the end anyway. So we did well mixing this one. Um, but it's just our custom mix. I'm using it because I really like the tone of it. You can use any color you like to do a paint wash. Keeping in mind, even though I'm using silk finish, we're gonna be thinning it down with some water in a second. Um, when you mix more than 30% of water to any paint that has a built-in top coat, um, every brand's different, but Pure Eco and a few others I know are about 30%. If you're mixing more than 30% water, you are changing the formulation of the paint and you do need to seal. That's one thing to keep in mind. Apart from that, go for it. So we're just gonna tip out, I'm gonna take my paint. Just gonna tip out my paint. That's in this jar. I'm not gonna use all of it. 
Um, I don't think I need to use all of it yet, but we'll see how we go. Hang on. I just had to, the internet just decided it didn't want to internet anymore. I'm still here. I'm hoping you can still see me and hear me. I'm going to keep going anyway. If you can't, I apologize. Okay. So I've got about 50% of that jar of paint left in here. So I would say it's about 50 mil. And then we're going to grab some water and I'm going to start with a ratio of 50-50. So we're going to add about the same. I've just got my kettle here. About the same of water. We're going to start with a 50-50 and then we'll mix it down and we'll thin it down from there. Let me grab my little paddle pop stick over here. Okay. So this is where we're at. We've got our paint. Let me tilt the camera down. That makes it easier so I don't spill it. 50-50 and then all you're going to do is mix this really, really well together. Um, a whisk is really, really helpful, but look, Paddle Pop Stick works just fine. And you just want to mix it really well so there's no clumps of paint and so all that water is really well combined with that paint. So I like mine to be sort of the consistency of milk. Um, enough that like it coats the back of a spoon or if I dip my finger in, it coats my finger, right? That's the consistency that I like. You can absolutely make it thinner. I think we are going to make this a little bit thinner. It's still feeling a little bit thick. So I'm just going to add in, I don't know, another tablespoon of water. Approx. Just going to look something like this, okay? Now I've turned off the internet, all my emails are coming through. Obviously the internet was not working. So you just sort of want it all mixed together like so. So you've got a little soup of colour and water. So again, it's enough to sort of coat your finger. Now, for application, we are going to use a brush on our legs. Um, <coughs> sorry. A brush on our legs to get into our carved detail down here. On the rest of it, we are going to use one of our sponge applicators. These are, I think they're $7 on the website. They might be $6, I don't know, $7 I think. These are amazing, I highly, highly recommend them. For our brush, I've just got one of our cheap chip brushes. I think these are about 10 bucks. This is the 38 mil one. I think we've still got the 25 mil on the website. Again, use whatever you like. And then last but not least, <clears throat> I've got my ginormous pack of microfiber cloths that I haven't even opened yet. Oh, hang on, there might be a reason for that. <laughs> oh no. Right, let me grab one of these out. So you need some sort of cloth just to wipe the, ow, finger, wipe the excess off as you go. Um, a paint wash is a little bit different to a stain. A stain, well, with the Pure Eco stains, um, I pretty much just wipe them on. You guys have seen me apply them heat. I just wipe them on and leave them um, and work them into the surface. Whereas a paint wash, yes, you can wipe it on and work it into the surface, but um, I find sometimes you still need to wipe off like the excess a little bit as well. So let's start with the front. And I've got you back a little bit. It might bring you a little bit closer. I just want you to sort of see an overall picture of what we're working on here. All right, so here we are, looking beautiful. So this is um, a pine as well. I don't think I mentioned that before. So we're gonna load our sponge. Like so, I'm not gonna pick up the bowl because I can already say I'm gonna spill it. Loading up our sponge without putting it all over yourself, ideally. And I've got my drawers in. I find it's easier to work with when I'm doing something like this. And we're just gonna wipe our paint wash on like so. Now, this is going to help remove some of that yellow and help give us this really nice finish as well. Now, you don't have to work super fast, but you do want to be a little bit snappy about it, okay? And 
just like stain, if you can, either work in sections or sort of go from one side to the other as much as possible. That way, you're not going to have a really patchy finish. Okay? So we're just going to keep wiping it on, moving it around, getting it all over. Best thing with a paint wash as well, if your piece isn't sanded like 100% and you've missed a little bit of stain here and there, sometimes the paint wash will just go really nicely straight over the top as well, which can make your life a little bit easier. If you've got one of those pieces that's a little bit tricky to sand, like our legs, for example, where it's got a bit of carving and a bit of detailing, it can make it that little bit easier. All right, so there's our wash on. Now we're gonna come in and you're gonna come in with your cloth and you're gonna start wiping away that excess. And just keep rotating your cloth so you don't sort of reapply it as such. Like so. Now, if you find it is sort of really soaking it in, if your timber's a bit thirsty, you can come in with um, a damp cloth as well. I'm using a dry cloth at the moment, uh, and it's pretty good so far, but if I do find that it starts to be not quite enough, then I can still come in with a damp cloth as well. But like it comes off pretty easy. So I just missed a bit here in the corner. So I just touched that up as well. So you can see that difference already. So it's just toned down that yellow and it's giving us this really nice washed finish. which I think is just beautiful on this timber as well. So I've got the original handles to put back on this too, which I think are gonna be absolutely stunning. So it just, you just sort of keep rubbing until you're happy with it. You can of course go back in and apply more if you want more. You can take more away. It's, it's one of those things where you can really, really play with, um, with the look of it. And you can layer different colors as well. So you can have quite a lot of fun with this. And um, a paint wash as well is really, really easy to sand off if for whatever reason you decide you don't like it. It is very, very easy to sand off. All right. It's just feeling a little bit heavy for me on a couple of spots. So, and it's sort of soaked in a little bit. So, where's my spray bottle gone? Where did I sit it? Hang on two seconds. Let's me find it. I'm not going to spray my water straight on it. I'm just going to spray it onto my cloth. Nice damp patch on my cloth. And then this will sort of reactivate it a little bit. 
and help that move around just a little bit as well. That's better. much happy with that. It just needed a little bit. There we go. Alright, I'm really happy with that. So let's bring you around. Let's do the ends and then we're going to do the legs and then the top. So, round to the end. So a reminder of what we started with, we were very, very um, uh, yellow. I know we're not yellow anymore. So we're gonna do the same again. Now I'm not too fast if I get the paint wash on my paint. That's not really a major concern of mine. I'm just going to bring it along the top of this piece as well. Like so. I think I want a little bit more along this top. I'm just going to let it sit for just a second. That's better. So you can really, if you let this sit longer, it dries that little bit more. And you get that nice finish as well. Let's go down the other end. Oops. And then I'll bring you. So we're looking really nice. We're going to do the legs in a minute. The other end. Oh, the sun's in the camera a bit. I apologise. I'm going to be here for a second. So again. I'm going to get this underside edge as well. It just makes it look a bit nicer. Like so. And just keep rotating your cloth. As it dries on the cloth, um, it won't sort of be an issue where you're just sort of reapplying what you've taken off. There we go. Looking really nice. I like to stand back a little bit. Sometimes it's nice just to get a bit more perspective as to where you need a little bit more. And this top bit needs a little bit as well. Just gonna dry it just a little bit. And then we'll wipe off that excess. There we go. Looking beautiful. So it's still nice and light, um, but now it's got, um, it's not as yellow. So we're just, it's just softened the timber while still showcasing the timber, which I really, really like. So I'm just gonna bring my chair around. I'm gonna have a sit down and we're gonna do these legs and I'll show you how to do these as well. Now, oops, that's if I bring you down as well. 
I will do, we'll do the legs and then we'll do the top last. Because I've already brought you down here now. Okay. Right. Over here, where are we? These are our legs. Let me bring you down a little bit more. Oops. No, there's no issues. Go wait. Okay, there we are. Um, let's bring our stain. And where'd my brush go? Okay. So, same process as what we did on the rest of it, except this time we're going to use a brush. I generally like to use a um, a sponge because I do just find it easier. But for detail like this where it's all carved, a brush is definitely easier because you want to get that paint wash into there. And there's no real trick to this other than make sure there's nothing like super close to your piece that you don't want to get paint on because it will sort of splatter a little bit okay and you just sort of take it around and then you can come down and uh, wipe some of that excess off as well This one's so pretty. So this piece also has a mirror. It actually had a whole top piece originally. Um, but I think that really, really dated it. So I did take that off completely and I haven't sanded it and won't be putting it back on because I already know this piece will sell a lot better without it. But it has a beautiful mirror, which I will show you because we're going to paint wash that as well at the end. Um, that I'm going to, I think I'll sell it with it or put it as an optional extra. Not everybody likes a mirror, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's carved. It's just stunning. And it's like this piece as it was, was stunning. But the top piece of it, and I will, can I, oh yes, I'll, I can show you. When we go do the mirror, I'll show you. It just, it really, really did age it quite a lot. And I didn't want to add sort of that much, I didn't, hang on, what was I trying to say? I aged it too much, and sometimes when you get dresses, having the mirror, etc., on it can really, it makes it look really dated, um, so it is nice to be able to take them off, and this one did come off quite well, so I'm not going to put those two pieces back on, and eventually I'll probably just end up selling them, like they're fine, and somebody might have a piece that they want to restore, but for this particular dress, I just didn't think that they were sort of beneficial to the overall piece. Was what I was trying to say there. That was a horrendous sentence. I apologize. Some days my brain works and some days it does not. So I'm just sort of really wiping. Um, I like that little bit of a build up of the paint wash in there because it does look really, really pretty. You sort of see how it's in all the grooves. I don't want to take it all away. I want to thin it out a little bit, but I don't want to take it away because it sort of highlights those details as well. It sort of does what a wax would do um, if I was to wax it where it just sort of highlights the details. So it's really, like they're really, really pretty, pretty, pretty legs. Let's bring this around. Well, Australian furniture can be very, very boring, but sometimes the legs are what make up for it. And you just go get a piece with some nice bones and just the legs to match. So again, I'm just sort of using my brush to get our paint wash into all there. Now you can absolutely make your paint wash a lot thinner as well, um, or a lot thicker. It's really up to you. I like this consistency. I find I get the best results um, time and time again using this consistency. I don't use paint washes a lot. I do generally just prefer just to go straight in with a stain, one of Pure Eco staining glazes. 
but it is nice. Oops, I missed that bit. It is nice having a paint wash as an option. So I'm just making sure I get in all those bits. There's nothing worse than having a leg where like half the leg's done. That, that always really irritates me. So I always make sure legs are done on all four sides. In this case, they're round, so they don't really have a side, but just make sure we get it all. And then again, take our cloth. Make sure you get these little nooks and crannies as well, because you will notice if they're not done. Take our cloth. Wipe off most of our excess. Sorry, I was just seeing whether that was somebody walking down our driveway or next door, but it wasn't. It was the concrete yard. Every, you can drive down our driveway too, guys, if you're local or if you're visiting. Drive down our driveway. Don't park on the street and walk down. We've got so much parking. Oh, and we've got signage. Did you see that? We finally got our signage. We did all right last month. Like, it's still not 100%, but last month, I feel like we're just starting to relax a little bit. We're not quite as stressed as what we were and we were able to buy signage last month which i think was really really nice okay that's looking really good so again i'm just sort of taking my cloth if there's like an excessive amount oops sorry i knocked the microphone there's an excessive amount anywhere i'm sort of wiping that off but i am really really happy with that uh, that leg's looking good. Let's go down the other end. This is such a pretty piece. I cannot wait to stage it. And, um, see how we go with it. I don't even know how much to put on it yet, to be honest. Now, one thing I am going to do before I start doing those legs, I'm going to do these two little pieces on the inside. On my leg up this end as well. And one just here. That sounds like a Coria. It is a Coria. Okay. Give me five minutes, guys. Afternoons. Kelly, if you're watching, we just sold your dining table, love. All right, now back to this. Let's do this leg. So, again, we're just going to wipe our wash all over and get into all those grooves. At this point, it's pretty self explanatory. But <clears throat> I'm loving this colour. I think it's beautiful. I'm really liking the way that it's drying. It's got a little bit of warmth to it, um, which I love. I didn't want it to dry too grey, um, but I'm really, really liking this uh, fossil. It, this has turned out pretty much exactly like fossil, and fossil was the base in it. Um, it's a really beautiful, like, creamy, creamy white. Off, like, it's an off-white. It's got a grey tone to it. 
but it can look really creamy and warm as well. And I was hoping I would get a lot of that. And I'm definitely getting those colors in this piece. So I think it's, it's perfect and it's exactly what I was after. So get lots, you can really soak, like you can put on as much as you like because you're gonna wipe it off. But I just really wanna make sure I get plenty up there in those joins or in the um, cutout bits. Again, come through with our cloth and wipe off all that excess as well. Okay. I don't actually know what time it is. Um, 14 that's all right I've got school pick up today so we'll finish off this shortly and then I can go I feel like my days just aren't quite long enough I used to um, when I was back at uni I used to nanny and um, like school pickup was great and all but I always felt like I'd like lost half my day it always threw me out having that at like 2 30. Um, and then I used to have, I used to have my classes after, after one of my jobs as well. I used to, uh, have my job, uh, it was like 2.30 to like 4.30. And then I'd go to uni for the evening. I was great because I had the mornings, but I always felt like school time's just, it feels like the middle of the day still. <laughs> it's mildly inconvenient at times. It'll be easier once I've got all, all three kids, but... Two of them at school at the very least. Harry, we're tossing up whether or not we send him to kinder. He's only, what is he now? 14 months, I think. Yeah, it must be 14 months. What is it? Yeah, it's August, 14 months. Um, yeah, be, oh yeah, 14 months next week. Let's do the last leg. Um, <clears throat> next week, rather. And, um... We're tossing, like, we've never sent any of our kids to kinder that early. But he's so busy, and now he's walking. Like, he was so busy today, he wore himself out. He fell asleep the minute Joe put him in the car to take him on a um, pick up with him. <laughs> he's just, compared to the other two, he's just into everything. He's driving me nuts. So I feel like kinder, I think he'd thrive in kinder. So then we've got two at kinder, and then we'll have one at school. Rosalie's still got another year of kinder and then she'll be at school as well. But I look forward to the day where they're all just in one location and I don't have to drive from one end of town to the other. Although they're building, the government are building a um, kindergarten at our primary school at the moment. And it's made pick up and drop off. Drop off's not too bad, but pick up, it's made it just absolute mayhem. They've taken away a car park and we had a drive through, which I would say it must have easily fit at least 20 to 30 cars in it. Like it was a really long, like big loop and it was brilliant. We never used it because Oliver, like when he started, he couldn't put his seatbelt on by himself. And um, Oliver's like the world's slowest walker. Like he will amble his way out of school. Like I've got nothing going on with my life. Um, he will just, when he's in a rush, you can't slow him down. But for some reason, leaving school, he is always the last kid out. And um, we never used the drive through because he was just too freaking slow and I'd be holding it up. Um, most kids are keen to get out of school like really, really fast. But he just, I don't know what it is. The rest of the time, I'm telling him to slow down. We pick up Rosalie from kinder. He's running up and down the hall. And I tell him to slow down 20 times. But school, I'm going to amble our way out and have a chat to everyone first. Um, but once they're all... Yes, so anyway, what I was saying is because they've taken away this car park and the drive through there's now at least 40... 40 to 50 cars that have got nowhere to go, that don't know where to park. So, and some are really good. They've been coming later or they've like gone up and parked 
we're like on a corner, but like in a little, it's like a little um, couple of streets. And then like the school continues up around the corner, up on the main road. So there's plenty of like places to park, but there's not enough parks. And they've built a teacher's car park down at the very end where we park, um, which is great because that's just like the one the one two area and normally it just be us but now they've added all these other cars and of course nobody knows how to park and everybody's confused and then you get all the ones that don't park in parks it's very frustrating <laughs> school pickup i used to love because i'd get to sit in the car for half an hour and i just take that as my little wind down of the day and it would be just my little moment to get into the next before we sort of started that next part of the afternoon where it's a bit chaotic. And now it just feels very stressful. And I don't have my nice quiet pickup time anymore. You'd have a little chat to a couple of the mums and it'd just be easy. And now it just feels horrible. <laughs> There's nothing easy about school pickup time anymore. All right. That's so pretty. I've outdone myself. I think, I think I have outdone myself. Um, gosh, those legs are gorgeous, aren't they? I, I had to have this piece, piece. The minute I saw it, I had to have it. My husband was taking a trip to Melbourne, so I got him to pick it up for me on the way, on the way back. And um, I'm so bloody glad that I did, because I think it's just, oh, I'm so in love with it. I'm so excited to get this stage um, this afternoon, maybe, depending on how we go. Uh, right now, sorry, I'm going to bring you up. Let's do the top and I'm going to bring you all the way up. Sorry. I'm going <laughs> to look at the mess. I've got stuff going everywhere in here today. Hang up. Now he's done like a full 360. <laughs> I'm just bringing you all the way up. This tripod's fantastic. It goes to, I think it's 1.8 meters. Um, and it's brilliant because you can see everything. The sun's in my eyes, so I can't see you, but can you see me? Yes, you can. All right, let me move those out of the road. Okay, let's do the top. So exactly the same as what we're doing for the rest, except we're gonna go back to our sponge. Pop our cloth off, oops, off to, oh goodness. Off to the side for a second. Dump our brush down there. So I still got, from what we mixed, if it holds still, this is what we've got left. So we've used about half. So I did mix it about right. I didn't want to mix too much, but I also wanted to make sure we just had enough right from the word go. And I've just sort of loaded up my sponge exactly the same way that we do um, anything else, right? You dip it in wipe off some of that excess it's all soaked into the sponge so it's sort of hard to see but we're going to do the same as what we did on the rest i'm going to try and go i'm way too short for this i'm going to go back and forth one side to the other whoops without spilling it all over myself ideally do our edges and we're just going to come back and forth use a little bit more if we need to and it really doesn't matter like what direction you wipe this on because we are going to wipe off this excess as well I'm just going to make sure I get these edges as well while we're here Now we're gonna grab our cloth. Oops, no, not on the floor. Goodness me, right, edges. I always like to take my ends off first because the grain's open uh, and you don't want that soaking in too far. The grain's open as in that's the end, end of the piece of timber. So we just don't want it soaking in too far up that end. Now that sun is on it and I can see it's drying out. I'm just gonna spritz it down. 
It's just warmed up in here a little bit. You can see that drying really, really fast. Oh, that timber is so gorgeous. It's a pine, but it's just stunning. Now the top, it did have a, um, like a piece on the top. So there's still the holes. I'm actually completely leaving those. Um, I don't like to fill screw holes. I feel like in the end, it just sort of makes it more obvious that they're there. And they just don't look as nice. So I am going to leave them. I'm just spritzing it just because I am finding it. it's dry just that little bit faster. I do want it to match all of the rest. I feel like this has been a really long life. Has it been a really long life? I've had a few interruptions. Maybe that's what's done it. I feel like I've been doing this for ages. All of a sudden. I'm just continually sort of just rubbing it back and forth a little bit. When I'm wiping off the excess, I do like to stay with the grain a little bit. So I'm that way it stops any sort of lines from forming. That's so pretty. I'm in love with this color. I think it's gorgeous. Oh, all the way down the back. How beautiful is that? It's so pretty. I'm so happy with this. I'm going to come down here. So we're going to come down and do the mirror in a second. But let me prop you off for just a minute. Let's have a little close-up look. How we've done. Okay, let me come over here. Isn't she beautiful? So it's just toned down that yellow. We've still got heaps of beautiful timber grain coming through, but it really has toned down that yellow quite a lot. The legs are looking really beautiful. And then our top is just beautiful. Look at that. I'm really, really happy with this. Now, if you find that it's a little bit patchy or say one area is darker than another, come in with your spray bottle straight away. Don't leave it and give it a rub. See how it's looking. If it's still just not evening out as much as what you need it to, give it overnight to dry and then come back in with some really fine sandpaper and just give it a really, really light sand. Um, and you'll find a lot of the time that's enough to sort of even it out because it takes that really top, that top, top layer off. She's looking gorgeous. Okay, so that's our paint wash on our main piece. Now, let me grab our tripod before I walk over there. And, um, bring you over. Let's have a look at it. Oh, another truck. What is going on today? Hang on, guys. Give me two seconds. I'm just going to face you to the ceiling for a minute. that brought the table just before they've dropped they're dropping off a heater um, right so we've got this this um, let me turn it around right we've got this beautiful mirror that came off it so we're going to put the paint wash on here as well tone down that yellow but it's just gorgeous so we're going to do that but just let me while i've got the camera off the tripod these are the two top pieces that were on there so two of these um, mirror hooked on up here. This is one side, that's the other side. They are screwed in into here. But I just feel like they really, really aged it. Um, as beautiful as they are, they definitely didn't do it 
any benefit. So I'm going to take the handles off because they are gorgeous. I'm going to save those for a future project. But I think these, as they sit, um, I'm going to pop them up in Marketplace for free and just see if anybody wants them. Otherwise, I might even pull them apart. You never know. The timber is beautiful, so I might be able to do something with the timber later on. But these were in, like, the finish on these is crap. Oh, oh, what was on the dress, it was not, didn't look anything like this. It was the yellow, but it wasn't, it didn't look like it was flaking off. Um, but, yeah, so that's what was on the dresser originally. All right, let's bring you over. It's 1.30, where uh, I've got an hour. Let's do the top of this. Turn you around. Oops, ow, fingers. Sorry. I know it's so annoying when I do this to you all, isn't it? All right, let's pop you. Oh, nope. I don't want to add anything else to this. Thank you. Me move our parcel. Um, where am I going to put the parcel? Oh, yeah. Ooh, right. Where's our mirror? Down here? Me tilt you up, I think. Let's just do it like that. I think that works. You can see what we're doing. So again, we've got our detailing and then we've got our, um, it's my brush. We've got our detail and then we've got our nice flat surfaces. So we're going to use our sponge and we're going to use our brush. Um, let's start with our brush, I think. Let's get our stain, our wash into all these areas first. So I just, just do it however you can. Just get it in there more than anything. On the mirror is not an issue. That will scrape off really, really easy. I very rarely, if ever, tape mirrors. Um, most of the time, I do find it's just easier to... Um, sentence what is wrong with me today most of the time i find it's easier just to put the paint on it it's not a big deal and it does come off really easily even when it's got a bevel so just wiping that all down there and i think this it's i'm feeling it now it's quite warm in here and it is drying very very quickly so i'm just going to give it a quick little spritz just keep it nice and damp i'm going to take our sponge I just make sure that I get it around the frame as well. Yeah, let's see how the sponge goes with this sort of detail. Well, it's not too bad actually. It's a little bit light on, but it did all right. And down, oops, and making sure that you get all your sides and your edges along the top. You don't want to miss any areas. Now we're going to take our cloth and just start wiping off that excess. So pretty. So we're just wiping up and down. I'm just going to spritz over it a little bit. It is drying real, really, really quickly.
like so. So you just sort of keep going until you're happy with it. You can layer it on more if you want more. This would be such a pretty mirror, I think, if you did some really fun colours to it. But for today, we're just going to do this. I'm going to see if it sells with it. If it doesn't sell with the piece, if the I'm going to put it up as an optional extra. If it doesn't sell, whoops, sell with the piece, we might do something fun with it, I think. I need to do something fun at the moment. I'm a little bit bored. I've done lots of grey lately. And sometimes it's just nice. to do something a bit different. I'm about to start another commission. So we're going to be doing another commission. Um, it's going to be carbon in silk finish. So we're going to start that in the coming weeks, in the next couple of weeks. I don't have to have it done until the end of, of October, start of November. Ah, uh, sorry, hang on. Is it October? November, yeah, November. Um, till like the very last week of October. But October is going to be a big month for us. We've got two trips away. Um, I've got the Pure Eco Painters Retreat, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm so excited. Uh, so we've got that at the start of October, and I'm pretty sure there's still tickets for that as well. And then we're also going to go to the Mint um, Painters Untamed as well. And I'm pretty sure there's still some tickets for that too. So we are going to be doing both, which um, is nice. So it's just going to be Hubby, Harry, and me. Uh, going to the Pure Eco one, but then we're all going to the mint one. But the kids and Joe will go to the beach and stuff on the days when I'm there. And I'll go have some uh, fun and all time without children involved. That's beautiful. I'm so in love with this piece. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy. I think that's beautiful. So it's just enough. It sort of highlights the details a little bit. I feel like I was a little bit lost before. Got the beautiful scrolls through here. It's just a really, really nice piece. It's nice when you get pieces like this, isn't it? Just getting some up in here. Make sure we get our edges done and make sure they're all looking pretty. So you can just sort of keep layering it if you need to. Just not everywhere will need more, but sometimes you'll have sections that just need that tiny touch more just to make them look really nice and finished. That's better. Beautiful. So for the mirror, all we do is I like to grab. Do I have it out here still? Hang on. Let me show you while we're here. So the mirror, you just need a scraper that's designed for mirrors. Hang on. Is mine still here? Oh yes, it is. There it is. Um, so I use this on glass doors and on mirrors. So. Uh, we actually stock the, um, oh goodness, itchy nose. Um, we stock the two fussy bloke ones. Let me show you that. Oops. Okay. Oh, it's got really warm in here. So this is the two fussy bloke ones. Uh, I don't know how much they are. I can't tell you, but they're on the website. <laughs> I think they're around the $20 mark. Um, they come with the spare blades, etc. as well. This is not a Too Fussy Bloke one. I don't even know what brand this is. I don't even know where I got it from. I found it in my stash one day and I've been using it ever since. Um, and I'm a waste not want not, so I'm not going to go and open a new one. So you take that. Now I like to have a little cloth. I really, really like these chucks. Dual action ones. 
I don't know where they come from. My mother-in-law likes to gift us things. And this is one of the things that she keeps gifting us. This and rubber gloves. Um, she's a big fan of gifting, <laughs> uh, which is fine. But these ones, they've got like a, the texture. Um, so start with that. And then if you need to, I sort of just wipe it around your edges. And this will take most of it off. But if you've got big paint splatters, you sort of run your scraper along as well. And that will take them off really nicely as well. And then, once you've got it looking all pretty, so just sort of, I use my nail, not that I've really got nails these days, but I have nails for about two seconds and then I do something like this and they're covered in stuff and they start breaking again. So that you can use that edge as well. If you don't have nails, just sort of keep wiping it until you're happy with it. Use your scraper when you need to. And then if you're doing a lot of mirrors and glass, I want to highly recommend, I really like this glass cleaning spray. I either use this one or I use the Karcher um, Concentrate, which is like a professional grade. This one's like four bucks from Big W. I think it's Big W. Yeah, Big W, I think. Um, but Karcher, which is this cleaning thing, these guys have their own. Um, and it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. Um, it's so, so good. Uh, this one's great though on ones that like aren't too dirty, but if you've got a really dirty mirror or window, hang on, it doesn't spray if I don't turn it on. Um, if you've got a really dirty window, then I do recommend the Karcher ones. So I'm just sort of going to spread this around, clean it up a little bit. And then I love this. Now this is literally just like a sucker thing that sucks up the water, but it is so freaking good. Um, it came on an e-waste lot with my husband. And I plugged it in at work, so it instantly became mine. But it just sucks it up. And there's just something about it. It just worked really, really well. Because I just, I'm not a cleaner at all. But this just does a really, really, really nice job. And I don't end up with streaks everywhere. If I was to do this by hand, I can guarantee I would have streaks everywhere. It's just got like a little rubber blade on it. And it's not great because this is a round mirror. But... Pretty, like it's not amazing but it's pretty good look at that it's pretty good so it's got one piece of the mirror missing at the bottom but that's not a big deal it's a vintage mirror you're gonna get that and let me turn it off um that'll do i think that feels like a day well done oh it's another truck okay i'm gonna go thank you all so much for joining me and i will catch you all next time have a lovely afternoon everyone